quilt diamond, ish, diamonte, <laughs> quilt diamonte, diamond, quilt diamond, diamond quilted shape, whatever. Oh my goodness, what's wrong with my talking? Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you guys are all doing well. I hope you've had a fabulous week, and I hope you're ready for this weekend. <laughs> Today's video is all about luxury handbags that I think are elegant, that I think are timeless, that I think are well worth the investment. We are gonna go through my top list and well it's only fitting right? I always talk about classic pieces and I'm sure you guys have noticed from my collection of handbags that I tend to be... I keep to the more minimalistic side, I don't follow trendy pieces, so I thought I would share that with you. Before we dive straight into the video, if you could just hit that like button, and if you're not already a subscriber, please make sure you're subscribed so you never ever miss a video with me. I post up every Saturday. Without further ado, let's dive into bag number one. Over here, and I'm going to show you the bags as I speak about the bags, we have the Hermes Birkin. I feel like you can get away with calling the smaller Birkins an elegant bag because of the size of it. When it starts getting to the bigger side of things, they're definitely much more casual looking, so you wouldn't call it elegant, you'd call it more of a casual bag. But for the size 25, it's in between, right? You can pull it off as casual and you can pull it off as an elegant bag. The reason why I think this is a great investment for those of you that don't know, majority of people do know, that when you buy this bag, the minute you take it out that shop, it is worth double the amount you've paid for it. And sometimes even triple, like it just depends on your leather, the color, all that stuff. It just adds value, literally, which is mind blowing. It is the most expensive bag to buy aftermarket. We all know why. It's not as easy as walking into Hermes and being like, hi, um, could I have that Birkin? Could I have that one too? And I would like one of those. <laughs> Impossible to do that. You could never ever do that. So that's what makes this bag so sought after. It's the fact that the demand for it is so high, but it's not as easy as walking into store and just being like, yeah, I'll take one, 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 one. <laughs> so not only are you getting a bag that's iconic, that's timeless, you're getting a bag that is well worth the investment because in however many years time if you did want to sell it for whatever reason may be then you will be more than likely getting your money back as long as the condition isn't bad <laughs> and if you're anything like me trust me this will be perfect the day i die moving on to number two on the list we have the sac de jour which I, you guys, I just don't understand why this bag is so underrated, like seriously. In terms of quality, in terms of use, into it, everything, I think it's the most perfect bag because it is elegant, it is not crazily expensive and it is perfect for anyone that is new to luxury and you know wants to start a collection. I genuinely can't understand why this bag is not on everyone's to buy list. I really really and truly can't. The fact that it's a boxy cut and the structure of it, it just adds to it. That's what makes this bag so chic. You've got your little feet at the bottom. It's such a well-made bag and for the price of it, it's usually 1400 1500 Sometimes you can actually get it on sale if you catch it at the right time. I managed to get mine for 1150 I think it was, but I did get a bit of a, of, of a discount on it and it's like... <laughs> For that price? Seriously? I could not recommend it more, like, you can tell. <laughs> it's one of those bags that I'm like, yeah, I'm so glad I bought. At first I was like, uh, uh, but you know what it is, right? When you don't see things a lot around, you start to think, mm, and you start to question. Especially from my side of things, because I haven't always been into, like, well, not that I've always haven't been, but I didn't have the money for all this fancy stuff, so I kind of didn't know much or my sense of style or what I wanted and what would look good but since then obviously I have learned a lot and I've learned what I do like and it doesn't matter what everyone likes so yeah definitely a bag that I highly recommend honestly the best bag that I ever bought and spent money on because I've not looked at this bag for one day and thought oh why did I buy that it was such a waste of money it's 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 just it's just perfect not only can you get it in different sizes but you can also get it in different colors <sighs> oh, I do love you. I don't show you enough appreciation, do I? <laughs> so one thing that you'll notice, I should have mentioned it in the last bag, but <laughs> we're mentioning it now. One thing you will notice in all my bags is that 
there is not really any logos on there and that adds to the chicness of any bag if I'm completely honest with you. I don't think, and it's my personal preference, hence why I don't really have anything that's logoed out, but I feel like when things are very minimal, it's the whole saying, right? Less is more. And I feel like with bags, in order for them to look chic, less is more. So the less branding that you have on a bag, the better. And it's the case. I mean, look at the, the, the sac de jour. You look at the Birkin. The logo is very, very small and minimal. You're not going to know what brand bag, unless you are into handbags, and know what these bag styles are by just off the top of your head, unless you come close to it and see, oh, okay, that's Hermes. And most people will say Hermes as in Hermes or Hermes, the postal service in England. <laughs> So that definitely contributes to the chicness of a handbag, the very minimalistic approach, which will make this bag so, so timeless. You'll be able to use this for years and years and years. It will never get old. It's impossible for this to get old. How could this possibly get old? Like, seriously. And the next bag that we have over here that I highly recommend is the Kelly. Now, I, it, it's on par with the Birkin when it comes to investment purposes. Like, this is a really good investment, okay? There's no secret in that. <laughs> but apart from investment purposes, it is a timeless piece. Just like the Birkin, it's actually much older than the Birkin. The Birkin came out in 1984, if I'm not mistaken. This came out in 1956, 54, 56. So it's been around for a very, very, very long time. But usually when you do wear it, you're meant to wear it like this. Like, let me put that on. And that's how you should wear it because depending on how full it is, of course, can put strain on the lock clasp. So this is how you should wear it. But I mean, just look at that. It doesn't get any more chic than that. Like it is the definition of what a chic bag should look like. At the moment, from what I'm seeing online and social media and so on and so forth, the Kelly is definitely much more desirable at the moment. I don't know why. I think maybe because of the Kelly 20, but everyone wants a Kelly. And I don't blame them. Honestly, it is such a stunning piece. What I love most about it is the fact that ugh, it doesn't matter what you're wearing, okay? You could be dressed out. You could be... Just add this bag and it will instantly just give that... It, it will elevate any outfit. Like, you put on a pair of joggers, a long coat, some trainers, a little beanie hat, put this bag on, and it just ah, <laughs> lifts up that whole outfit straight away. So it is such a beautiful, beautiful piece to have to your collection because not only can you use it as a casual bag to uplift any outfit, you can also use it as a smart bag. When it comes to timeless and classic, this is it. The next bag that we're looking at is not actually a bag that I have, but it is the Louis Vuitton Capucine. The reason why I don't have some of the bags that I'm mentioning on here is because I'm very, I don't want to say, I'm, I'm, I'm very loyal. <laughs> I find it very difficult to branch out and because I love Hermes so much I tend to buy majority of things that I own from Hermes. One day we'll be able to buy a ready to wear because we all know ready to wear from Hermes is just next level. You rather buy a handbag with the money and yeah that's like billionaire status. I'm not at that status yet. <laughs> Don't know if I'll ever get there but hey one can only hope and pray. <laughs> and keep working hard. Okay, so the Capucine, in my opinion, is very, very feminine and, and it's not too, you know how like this is very square and structured? The Capucine is more delicate and just looks like a delicate little flower. <laughs> I don't know why I just said that, but anyways. Um, and what I love about the Capucine is the fact that you have the option to actually conceal the LV like logo at the front. What I do love and the ones that I'm drawn to the most when it comes to the Capucine is actually the ones that are covered in the leather and the color that they're in. So the logo's covered and then you just have the slight L sticking out. It's definitely up there with one of their iconic and reoccurrent bags. Reoccur- a current? <laughs> reoccurring bags. So they always bring out that bag in different colors and different leathers. It's it's one of those that just keep coming. And it's been up for quite a few years now. This is obviously much newer than all the other bags, but it's definitely become a favorite and something that I see Louis Vuitton continuously bringing out throughout the years to come. The resale value isn't too great. So investment wise, I don't think it's that great, but instead of going new, you could go pre-loved and you could actually scoop up some really, really good bags. I personally prefer the smaller bags as opposed to the bigger bags, but you guys know 
in general. I do like smaller bags and I love the look of smaller bags as opposed to humongous giant bags. Now I know I'm mentioning a lot of classic timeless pieces that are great transitional bags but I feel like I need something for every day, something that you can wear every single day for your day to day that's comfortable but still looks elegant and that is the Hermes Constance. The fact that you have the flexibility to go hands free if you want to so you can wear the bag crossbody but you can also wear it on your shoulder. I absolutely love that and I think it's vital for any bag that you want to use on a day to day basis. The Constance is literally the perfect day to day bag when you're running errands, when you're going doing your shopping, when you need to send a text. <laughs> Whatever you need to do, it's a very, very manageable bag, a bag that you're not going to be stressing so much about. It's very, very minimalistic. You have that beautiful H in the middle, which is actually the buckle, buckle, the clasp, the bag closure. And that is more than enough to just elevate the whole bag. This whole simplicity of the way that the bag is made. Again, another great investment piece. If you get that bag, then you could probably sell it for more or you will get your money back at the end of the time of using it because it holds its value really, really well. It's not as difficult to get as the Birkin or the Kelly, but it is still, you can't just walk in and be like, hi, can I have a Constance, please? So that's why it holds its value so, so well. The next bag that we have over here, okay, she's not the traditional diamond quilting. I was too lazy to get the other one out, but it is the Chanel Classic Flap. Now, when it comes to timeless, when it comes to classic, then, what better way than Chanel? You don't even need to know about fashion or designer. You just see this logo and you're like, oh, I know what that is, it's Chanel. <laughs> It oozes elegance. It is beautiful. And in terms of investment value, really, really good. And the reason why it's really, really good is because, well, Chanel being Chanel, right? The prices go up <laughs> three to four times a year. <laughs> the traditional diamond quilt holds its value more than the chevron. Now, we all know these are quite very much so expensive. So I always suggest when it comes to Chanel, look at the pre-loved market because you get some really, really good deals. And I mean, I know you won't save that much, but it's still a little bit, it's better than nothing. Again, like the Kelly, elevates any outfit. It's great for the evening. It's great for the day. Come on, it's Chanel. Last but not least on my highly recommended slash best investment bags, is the trendy CC. Here you have a modern, classic, mixed, beautiful conjunction, no, concoction, <laughs> conjunction, concoction, and I just absolutely love this bag and shoot myself every day that I didn't buy it years ago because I think it's such a beautiful bag. I love the fact that you have three different compartments. You guys know I have the Pochette Matisse from Louis Vuitton and that was my everyday bag for a certain amount of time. Loved it two bits because you had the different compartments. It's the same with the Trendy CC. I know if I got that bag tomorrow, I would love it two bits and pieces. You can wear it crossbody. You can, well, not crossbody. I wouldn't wear that crossbody. It's quite short, the chain, but you can wear it on your shoulder. You also have the top handle, which is perfect for people like myself. It is definitely a bag that is up there with, I, I think if you had to put a Chanel classic flap, medium classic flap in front of me, or the Chanel Trendy CC, I'd probably go for the Chanel Trendy CC. Pricing wise, it is also at a really, really good price point. So you better scoop one up before they sell out and before they put their prices up three or four times this year. <laughs> and there you have it guys. That is my little list, my little list of handbags. Everything is going based on what I collect myself and things that I genuinely like. I've curated a wardrobe and a collection of handbags that are very much classic pieces, timeless pieces. And that's how I tend to shop. I really, really believe in buying quality over quantity. And that's why I don't have hundreds of handbags. I rather have three of the best handbags in the world than have 50 of the just medium spectrum of handbags you know it's for me i'm quality over quantity and that's why you guys all know i'm hermes obsessed <laughs> i'm very much hermes obsessed i'm starting to realize like it's becoming a joke you know if i was a billion dollar baby then i would probably wear hermes from head to toe but you know we don't have that lifestyle life isn't that good <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, subscribe. I shall see you in next week's video. Have a beautiful, beautiful weekend and week. Take care.
Bye.